Now, number 10, there's five marks here, median semi intercortical range. So this is going to be a bit of a nuisance because the first thing you're going to have to do is put them into numerical order. And for this part here, for these two marks, you've got to write stuff instead of just putting nice numbers and equations down. A big spiel has to come out here. But what's this first one? Numerical order. Right, what have we got? Smallest. That'll be 12. Then it'll be the 16. Then we've got uh, 17. Then there's a couple of 18s, a 21, a 22, a 26, and two 27s. Is that them all? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 of them. Right, medians and quartiles. Well, I'm not sure which way you do it. I just divide them into four groups because you have to split it into four parts. Two remainder, two means I'll have four groups of two and there'll be two left over. Four groups of two. Now, the two left over will have to go symmetrically in between. Four groups of two with the two left over. So that's the way it would split. So there's my median in between, but there's my first quartile and there's my upper quartile. So what does it say again? I've already forgotten. A. Median. Well, the median's this one in between. Oh, I better set that out. Between 18 and 21. So you can either think add them, 39, and then half them. Or you can think the difference is 3. Split the difference. Add on 1 and a half. 19.5. The semi-interquartile range. Well, Q1 is 17 and Q3 is 26. So interquartile range means the difference between the highest and lowest quartiles. So that's 26, take away 17. And semi just means half it. So it's a half a nine. So that's 4.5. But B's going to be such a pest. In the second round, the median was 26. Well, that's higher. And the same with the quarter range was 2.5. That's smaller. So that means it was better in the second round. You have to write it all out. But the main things you would say would be, you're talking about a score. So you would say the score is higher on average in the second round. Oh, I can't bother writing all this out in the second round as what tells you that is it the median or the quartile range no it's the median as the median is higher at 26 which is greater than the original 19.5 and it's the same for the second but what can you say about the scores in the second round the scores maybe I should have said the scores are just as well it's not English in the second round, the scores are less spread out, or you could say they're more consistent, which is better, of course. More consistent in the second round as the, who told me that? As the semi-interquartile range is smaller at 2.5, which is, of course, less than 4.5. Keep that stuff. Number 11, simple little pair of simultaneous equations. Right, solve that algebraically. Algebraically again means no guessing. Well, there's not a great deal to choose between them. If one was positive and one was negative, I'd home in on that. So it's just what's my favourite little numbers to multiply by? Probably 2 and 3. So I think I'm going to get rid of x. That's going to be my plan. I'm going to eliminate x. So if I call that equation 1 and I call that equation 2, my plan will be this. If I double this one, I'll get 6x, and if I triple that one, I'll get 3x, and I'm quite happy with my 2 and 3 times table. So doubling this one, 6x plus 4y equals, and that's not scary for times 2, 34, 3 times this, 6x, 3 times that, 15y, 3 times that, 12. And then it's just a case of to make them disappear, I'll have to do a subtraction. So what I'm going to do here is subtract. So that means that take away that zero. Now, 
it's even Stevens which way around. If it was top takeaway bottom, then that's going to be negative, that's going to be positive. But if you do the other way around, bottom takeaway top, that'll be positive. But then that just turns out negative, so it doesn't make any difference. So I'll just subtract to the normal way. So 6 takeaway 6, that's 0. 4 takeaway 15 is negative 11y. 34 takeaway 12 is very nicely 22. Very nicely because when you divide it by a negative, whoops, 11, you get the answer exactly negative 2. Now you just pop that back in. Substitute y is negative 2 into whichever one takes your fancy for working out x. Maybe this one, maybe, maybe number 2. So how would number 2 read? It would read 2 times x plus 5 times negative 2 is 4. 2 times x minus 10 is 4. Take the 10 across and add it. 14. Divide by the 2. 14 divided by 2, 7. So there's my answer. y is negative 2, x is 7. Of course, you always do a little check. I use number 2. Check that with number 1 just as a quick check. 3 times 7 plus 2 times negative 2. What does that come to? Well, that's 21, and that's minus 4, and 21 minus 4 is 17, so that must be right. Number 12 here. Simplify this rational expression here. You've got a numerator and a denominator, which can be factorised because you can't simplify it by knocking out bits and pieces, like say, take off those x squares. What you have to do is factorise them and cancel out factors. It's only multiplying numbers that can come out. So you look, how can you factorise the top? Well, that one's easy because it's got a common factor of x. So it's an x times an x minus a 4. Now, if this works, you know there's going to be one of those in the bottom as well. Now, the bottom's this handy little quadratic here. So it'll be a bracket times a bracket. Unless, of course, you've had the misfortune to be in a school that does it this other way of trying to disengage the middle and rearrange it all. So what have we got? We've got x squared must come from x times x. The last times the last must be 20. So they multiply to give 20 with a difference of 1. That's 4 and 5. The positive of the middle term must go to the larger, so that must be positive, and that says they've got opposite signs. And there you go, those two factors are the same, so you've got x, they'll cancel out, so you've got x over x plus 5. Not sure whether you're allowed to put those wee scores through or not, in case that invalidates your working.